Episode 311, Overloaded with Energy. She went back to the audience and sat down. Lily leaned over and whispered to her, Both of you really looked compatible standing side by side together just now. When are you two going to announce the good news? She was referring to the news of their marriage. Megan did not consider announcing their marriage for the time being. It was a good idea to keep it a secret too. I'll tell you when the time comes. Okay, if there is such a day, don't forget to invite me to the wedding banquet. <laughs> okay. The Universal Music Festival was successfully concluded. Megan got in the car specially prepared for Andrew's team and left the venue with Travis. Halfway through the journey, the car took her to a secret location where Connor's convoy was waiting. After getting into Connor's car, the couple went home together. Megan's delicate face was blushing as she had become overcome with excitement and agitation. After seeing Connor, she immediately wrapped her arms around his neck without hesitation and planted a kiss on his lips. James, who was responsible for driving the car, heard strange sounds coming from behind. They didn't sound like they were having a conversation. When he looked at the rear view mirror, he saw the couple in a suggestive pose. Megan was sitting on Connor's lap in an embrace, locking their lips together in a passionate kiss. Okay, seems that the two of them can no longer restrain themselves. James was particularly considerate to his boss. He lowered the window blinds for them, turning the car into a closed private space, and then drove the car away from the busy urban areas. He found a safe and quiet place by the sea and stopped the car there, then got out of the car and took the other bodyguards away from them for a smoke. Under the great open sky, James and eight other bodyguards lay on the grass nearby, gazing at the stars while having a smoke. Eventually, their cigarettes ran out and they got sick of stargazing. They turned their heads and glanced at the car in the distance. It was still shaking in rhythm. One of the bodyguards couldn't help but complain. Our sir's overloaded with energy. It's already been a few hours. Are we still going home to sleep tonight? Another bodyguard said, Well, you better get ready to camp here. Camping's nice, but we have no equipment now, and the mosquitoes here are really insufferable, and they're eating us up. I swear, I'm going to be bitten to death. Clap, clap. Everyone started to clap at mosquitoes. Ah, oh, what a wonderful night. Connor and his wife were screwing in the car. James and the others were being screwed by mosquitoes outside. When it was almost dawn, everything was quiet once again. The couple was very satisfied after a pleasurable night of lovemaking. This was the first time they have done it in a car, but it was completely different than doing it at home. It was tense and exciting. Megan laid exhausted on Connor's body. She didn't feel like moving at all. Connor helped clean her body and put on a clean change of clothes he had prepared in advance for her. He smoothed her hair and then nibbled on her earlobe. How was it? You want some more, he asked. No, no, I don't have any more strength. Please let me go, dear. You are the one who seduced me first. Connor was still able to go on. As long as he was with her, he would always be filled with boundless energy in his body. Okay, okay, it was my fault. I was just so happy last night. I'm really happy that you personally came up to the stage and received your award. It was for you. Thanks, dear. Megan lifted her head and pecked him on the lips to show her gratitude. Thinking of the popularity award she had won, Megan felt like laughing. Dear, don't you think this is funny? After setting foot in the entertainment industry, the first award I've won is actually a music award. Am I going off track? Episode 312, Looking for a Chance. What's wrong with that, Connor said. This proves that you have the talents to become a celebrity in all aspects. Megan's talents were so promising that even Connor believed that she was on the same level as him. As long as she was willing to fight for it, the rewards would be astonishing. Stop joking. I don't even have a movie that's decent yet. Root of Evil is a huge hit. I bet that you can win the Best Newcomer Award with it. And when the rest of the movies are about to air, you're just a step away from winning the Best Actress Award. Seriously? I really hope so. Only when Megan won the award could she fulfill her mother's wish. The thought of it fired her up. She vowed to work harder towards that goal. 
Megan's fame rose drastically after the Universal Music Gala. Companies that were B-list or higher started to ask her to advertise for them. One of them was an invitation from a famous worldwide luxury perfume company, Louise Krylova. Samantha accepted the offer and set up an audition for Megan. LK, Louise Krylova for short, was a perfume company from New York and they were trying to expand their products to the continent. Uh, for that, they needed a suitable brand ambassador. Megan made some preparations and headed to the audition. She met a ton of A-list and B-list actresses at the audition and one of them was Miley. Megan had never met her once after the incident with Miley's miscarriage. It looked like Miley was looking for a way to regain her former glory. Miley frowned as soon as she noticed Megan, her eyes filled with hatred and disdain. Why is she even here? Miley scolded in her head. She's just a newcomer, so what if she just won the Best MV Style Award? It's nothing in the acting industry. The first thing that came to Miley's head was to prevent Megan from landing the spot. Miley thought she knew Megan well and believed that Megan landed the ambassador's spot for Rose because she slept with Jimmy. Because of this, Miley had made preparations to prevent that. Most of the representatives from LK were females, and Miley had already bought them out beforehand. It was clear to her that she would land the ambassador spot. No matter how good the other actresses were, they were just stepping stones to her. The sisters made eye contact and stared at each other for a few seconds and left. The audition began very soon. Since it was an open audition, every participant was sitting before the stage waiting for their number to be called. Miley's number was before Megan. When her number was called, she walked past Megan and glanced at her before going onto the stage. The audition was simple. They only required the actresses to do a few poses with their products in their hands, and they would choose the most suitable person for the spot. Miley began to pose with the product in front of the camera. The pictures were then projected onto a huge screen for the representatives to score. The score Miley got was the highest among other actresses that had gone onto the stage before her. Episode 313, Catch Her and Sink Her Teeth in Her. Looking at her own achievements, Miley felt very pleased inside. Her score was already considered a very high score. There were probably not many people who could easily surpass her score. In this public audition, there wasn't much opportunity to utilize one's creativity. The candidates had to strike the same poses as everyone else according to the requirements of the audition. Then the judges would see who was the most photogenic and who had the best temperament. Megan's performance was also good, but her luck was a little worse than Miley's. After her score was calculated, she was behind Miley by one point. The results came out and a representative of LK began to announce them. Miley took the highest score in the audition and won the endorsement deservingly. Miley looked towards Megan smugly, her eyes saying, hmm, thinking of beating me in your dreams. All because of one point, Megan lost the LK endorsement by a narrow chance. However, it was nothing she should regret. The most important thing was that she had participated. There would still be more opportunities for endorsements in the future. After the audition results were announced, all the candidates prepared to leave. At this moment, a man came jogging in and went up to the LK audition representative and whispered a few words to her. Nobody knew what he had told her, but after the woman listened to him, a horrified expression appeared on her face. She then turned her eyes to Megan. Seeing that Megan was about to leave, the LK representative called out to everyone through a microphone. Wait, everyone. Megan stopped subconsciously and looked back at the stage. She listened to the female representative announcing, I'm sorry everyone, there has been a mistake with today's audition results and we will make the adjustments now. I announce that the winners of the LK endorsement are Miley and Megan. The two of them are tied at the same score so both are chosen as our product endorsers. Congratulations to both of them. Before the female representative could finish her words, everyone below the stage was exchanging looks, especially Megan and Miley. They couldn't believe what they just heard. 
Miley thought that she was already the first place winner. Why did they suddenly change the results? The highest score was only 10 marks. How could they have miscalculated it? Suddenly, the two of them were tagged for first place. Had they lost their minds? Megan was thinking she had not given herself too much hope in winning, but now they had suddenly announced that she was also selected. How surprising. So could it be assumed that LK was going to do a double endorsement this time? If they were to shoot a commercial in the future, did that mean she would have to partner up with Miley? To tell the truth, Megan didn't really feel like working alongside Miley. She was also very aware of the woman's vicious intentions. Since Miley's miscarriage, Megan was sure that Miley despised her to death. If Miley had the chance, she would not hesitate to catch her and sink her teeth in her. But then again, she wasn't afraid of Miley. If they wanted a double endorsement, so be it. Who's afraid of her? Megan left the audition hall and went straight to the exit. Miley shouted at her from behind. Megan, wait a second. Megan stopped, her brow furrowing automatically, and then turned around and asked her, What? Miley was wearing a new white Chanel seasonal limited edition dress and was stepping up to her in a pair of black diamond studded platform heels. She crossed her arms and asked her arrogantly, I was originally meant to be the first place winner. If it wasn't for you sneaking around with your tricks again, how could the results have changed at such a short notice? <laughs> Do you think I was the one sneaking around with my tricks? Megan couldn't help but laugh at it. To be honest, you're really imaginative. If it was really me messing around, why didn't I just directly remove your name from the list to make myself the sole brand ambassador? Also, why do I feel that LK stocks will plunge into the abyss if we were to endorse their brand together? Episode 314, Even Thought of Dying. Megan didn't go through any back door for the spot. She won because of her own talent. If she really wanted to use her connections, she would have called Connor and had him land her the spot. But she didn't do so because she wanted to challenge herself. Success came with losing. That was the way she wanted to live. Miley began to waver. Megan was right since there was no way Miley could have won too if Connor had a part in it. Yet she felt very angry since she had to share the part with Megan. Do you really think I want to share the spot with you? Miley scolded. Thinking of it makes me want to puke. Miley stared at Megan with a twisted face. If it were legal, she would have strangled Megan to death on the spot. Yet Megan didn't bite back at her but slapped Miley instead. Megan, what was that for? Megan waved her hand and said, We really are sisters, huh? You want to puke and I want to hit you. Do you want to try again? Stay, stay away from me. Miley staggered backwards as she saw Megan raise her arm again. Miley could never forget how Megan punished her parents and her grandmother, how crazy Megan could get when she wanted to. Megan didn't approach Miley, but instead she just raised her hand. Miley was afraid that she was going to get hit and quickly jumped backwards. Miley slipped as she landed and fell backwards. Coincidentally, there was a bucket of dirty water used by the cleaners behind her. She hit the bucket, and the dirty water splashed all over her body. Miley screamed as her newest Chanel was covered in the dirty water. It was so embarrassing that she even thought of dying at that moment. Her dress was dirty, and she reeked of a weird smell. Looks like you love to play with water, huh? Megan smirked. Have fun, then. Megan didn't pull Miley up and left. Miley stared at Megan as she dug her nails into her own flesh. She struggled to get up and ran to the washroom. Miley quickly took her phone out and called Trevor. Mr. Trevor, I have something to report. Yes, Megan was at the audition, too. We both won the spot. That's all. Miley thought that she could be a mistress to Trevor, but she never expected that Trevor had no interest in her. Circumstances led her to earn his trust by doing other things. Her job was to report every move that Megan made back to Trevor. It was the only way for Trevor to continue her to support her financially. If Trevor were not there to support her, she would have crumbled into nothing. Yet the only thing that Miley would have never expected was that Trevor was the one who changed the outcome of the audition. 
Episode 315 never needed him to intervene. No one knew that the Louise Krylova Perfume Company was actually one of the offshore companies belonging to Trevor. It was not registered under the Tenfold Group, so it was difficult for the average person to find out that it was his company. When Trevor came to New York, he had also brought LK into the country. Originally, the main person he had meant the advertisement contract for was Megan of Euphoria Entertainment. It could be said that it was he who had arranged for her to become the brand endorser for the whole of America. He hoped that she could become a brand endorser under his company. This way, they could have more reasons and opportunities to meet up with each other frequently. As for Miley's ability to participate in the audition, it was purely an exchange of interest. When Trevor had learned about the audition results and that Megan had been defeated by one point, he immediately ordered his staff to change the results to retain her. After the audition had ended, Megan was about to drive home. Before starting the engine, she gave Connor a call. Hello, Megan? The faint, magnetic voice of the man came through the speakers, melting Megan's heart. My audition is over. Dear, and I got the endorsement. Wow, well done, Connor praised her and then asked again. Do you need me to come pick you up? No, it's all right. I just wanted to ask you a question. Did you help me win the endorsement through a back door? No, I didn't, my beautiful, lovely, and extraordinary wife. Why would you need to resort to using a back door? Connor understood Megan's abilities. Generally, she would never need him to intervene for minor matters like this. Megan had also made it clear that she didn't want him to interfere too much with her career and choices. He respected her. All right, enough with the sweet talk. Actually, I had been unsuccessful, and then suddenly they told me that I was selected. Don't you think this is strange? What's so strange about that? If they didn't choose you, that would be strange. Connor felt that his wife was the best in the world, no matter what her appearance, temperament, or professional accomplishments were like. She still had a good and unique foundation. Generally, as long as people were not blind, they would still choose her. After clearing up that Connor was not behind her odd victory, Megan said, Okay then, I'll speak to you later. I have to drive now. After hanging up the call, Megan put on her seatbelt and prepared to start the car. Just as the car was moving, she saw a shadow rushing across in front of her car. She immediately slammed on the brakes. When she got out of the car, she saw a woman hugging a little boy on the left side of her car. The little boy was probably being disobedient and had suddenly run off and his mother had caught him in her arms in time. Mike, don't simply run off next time, understand? Do you know how dangerous it was just now? What if you got hit by a car? The woman reprimanded the little boy. Is he okay? Megan came over and asked about the situation. The woman turned and was very surprised to see her. Oh, it's you, Megan. You are? The other person was wearing a flu mask and she couldn't recognize her. Lily picked up her son and stood up, smiling as she greeted her. I'm Lily. Megan finally realized that it was her. She looked at the little boy in her arms. His eyes and brows resembled Peter's, and he had a face almost similar to Connor's. She asked, Is he your son, Mike? Yes, Mike. Say hello to Auntie. It was probably because it was their first time meeting, but Mike was a bit shy. He clung onto Lily's shoulders and was not willing to greet Megan. Lily explained awkwardly, Sorry about that. He has a slight fever today and he's just not feeling very well. I was going to take him to the hospital to see a doctor. So that was the case. Megan knew that the New York Children's Hospital was nearby. It turned out that Lily had appeared in the parking lot with her child because she was originally going to take her child to see a doctor. Do you need my help? Episode 316, A Not-So-Small Scandal Megan looked at Lily, who was holding her child and carrying a bag on her back. Oh, can you help me get the stroller from the trunk? Lily asked. Megan got the stroller from the trunk and let Mike sit in it. Thank you. Let's meet up sometime, Lily said as she pushed her son into the hospital. Do you want me to accompany you? Megan understood how it felt to take a child to the hospital alone. It was very troublesome due to the complicated procedure. Thanks, but I can handle it on my own. Lily refused and went into the hospital. 
Megan sighed as she looked at Lily's back. Lily was not a bad person and she was facing many challenges by raising a kid on her own. Megan prayed from the bottom of her heart that Lily could find her happiness. Megan went back after Lily left her sight, yet she didn't notice that Miley was hiding behind a car and had seen the whole thing. Miley noticed that the boy looked like Connor and followed Lily into the hospital to learn more about her. Lily registered her kid at the hospital and took her son for a checkup. Yet when the doctor saw the report, he scolded, What kind of a parent are you? How could you drag this out when your son has such serious leukemia? Is this a life joke to you? You have to admit him to the hospital right away. Leukemia? Lily was stunned by the news. It's not a fever? It was as if everything became darker, and Lily found it hard to stand still. It felt like the sky was crumbling down on her. Lily listened to the doctor's every instruction and admitted Mike into the hospital right away. Miley followed Lily all the way and realized that the girl was Lily and the kid was her son Mike. If Miley was not wrong, Lily was the female singer from the group who had sat next to Megan at the gala. Miley recalled that there was not any news about Lily having a child. If word got out, it would not be such a small scandal. Miley took a closer look at Mike. The more she looked at him, the more he looked like Connor. Too bad that such a handsome kid was diagnosed with leukemia. Miley snapped a few photos of Mike, believing that if photos were made public, it would cause some distrust between Megan and Connor. Even if it would not separate them, it could still cause them quite a bit of trouble. Miley hurried out of the hospital and rushed to Trevor. She knew that Trevor hated the fact that Megan was together with Connor, and they could gain something from making the news public. Miley had gotten smarter. She decided not to publish the news herself, but instead went to Trevor and let him decide what to do. The Blackwater Manor Miley finally met Trevor. He was playing darts and could hit the red dot even when he was blindfolded. Wow, you are good at it, Miley praised. Episode 317, Threatening Him With Her Life What's the matter? Trevor asked as he took off his blindfold. It's like this. Miley reported everything she had found to him truthfully. Well done. Trevor praised her and then tossed a bank card to her. This is your reward. The bank card fell to the ground. Miley put her dignity aside and squatted down to pick up the bank card from the ground. She thanked him. Oh, thank you, Mr. Trevor. I'll continue to work hard. If I find anything, I will definitely report to you in a timely manner. Okay, you can go now. Trevor waved Miley away and she left the room in a differential manner. Trevor looked at the photos of the child in his hand, his dark eyes slightly arching. Yes, he really looked quite like Connor. Thinking of Connor, Trevor couldn't help but clench his fist, his hatred for Connor amplifying. It turned out that he was Andrew, and Andrew was him. He was really good at hiding his identity. The most despicable thing was, no matter what his identity was, he would always have Megan. This was something Trevor could not accept the most. Miley was right. As long as these photos were sent out along with an advertorial, Connor's reputation would be greatly tainted. He wanted to release this piece of news via various media channels after the launch of the LK Perfume advertising campaign. That time, Megan would be far away in New York, and she would not be able to resolve her misunderstanding with Connor. As long as a misunderstanding was created to damage the couple's relationship, he would have an opportunity. Also, there was just one more thing he had to do. Trevor stood up and told his assistant to prepare the car. At the New York High Tech Development Zone and a household chemicals plant, there were all kinds of advanced machinery and equipment here with first-rate production lines. To the eyes of an outsider, it only looked like a modern household chemicals production plant, but no one knew that there was a secret laboratory hidden below the factory. In the laboratory, liquid dripped into laboratory glassware, filling it with various unknown drugs. 
There were many white-coated researchers with flu masks and goggles working on these things. They sorted the refined items into categories and labeled them. There were many models, including the new invention code named IK-99. At this time, a secret door opened, and a group of people filed in. A masked black figure came in, too. As the man arrived, everyone bowed and greeted him differentially. Boss? The man waved his hand, gesturing for them to continue with their work. He walked straight into the office and sighed. The light in the office was very dim. After the man was seated, someone soon came in to report the work status. Boss, the orders due for delivery out on the 15th have been produced. Hmm. The man said in a deep voice, Call Dr. Alex into my office. Not long after, a gray-haired elderly man in a white coat was brought in. Sir, you wanted to see me? Dr. Alex, the IK-99 you've developed has the ability to induce a strong, irreversible hallucination once it enters the bloodstream. It is really a great invention, the man praised. Dr. Alex bowed his head, his expression dark and unclear. His heart was filled with bitterness. He was an academia at the Academy of Science. His specialization was in biological agents, and he had made great achievements in his career. But one day, a few years ago, a group of people had suddenly come out of nowhere and taken him away. They had imprisoned him and forced him to develop new drugs. At first, he had resisted, but his captors had threatened him with his daughter's life. He had no choice but to obey their orders to keep his daughter safe. Dr. Alex, I wanted to ask you something. Last time, I had asked you to develop a drug that could induce memory loss. How is it now? It has been developed. Alex answered truthfully and handed a transparent glass vial to the man. The man opened the bottle cap and took a sniff of the drug. It was colorless and odorless. He asked again, Can you mix this drug into a perfume and make it undetectable? I should be able to do it, Alex replied. Very good, do it. The man compelled as he handed the perfume, Sweet Angel, over to Alex. Megan got the notice from LK and rushed over to their company. Miley was already there when she arrived. The representative for LK's advertisement group handed them a schedule. They realized after reading the schedule that they would be heading to the LK's headquarters in New York and shooting their advertising video there. Other than the schedule, the representative also handed them two different bottles of perfume to test. Because there were two ambassadors, the perfumes that Megan and Miley got were different. Miley got the seducing elf, which represented a mature woman, while Megan got the sweet angel, which represented younger audiences that weren't older than 25 years old. Miley was unhappy with how LK had grouped her towards an older audience, but didn't bring it up at the meeting. Instead, as she stepped out the door, she snatched the sweet angel from Megan's hands. What are you doing? Megan scolded. Miley hugged the box that contained the sweet angel and threw the perfume that was assigned to her to Megan. Let's change, she said. You call this a change? More like robbing? Megan couldn't believe that Miley would even resort to doing something that would degrade herself for a bottle of perfume. This sweet angel is more suitable to me, while you, on the other hand, are more suited to using the seductive elf, Miley said. Fine, I get it. You are afraid to admit that you're older than me. Megan smiled. Well, this isn't something you can hide just by changing our perfumes. You should look in the mirror and look at your dark circles, your wrinkles, and your loose skin. On second thought, I think you should take the sweet angel. At least it can make you feel a little younger. Megan insulted and turned to leave. Miley looked at Megan as she left her eyes filled with anger. Miley hated Megan's mouth. She hated the fact that every word that Megan uttered was able to harm her. But she had no way to counter them. 
Miley had already noticed the symptoms Megan had mentioned. Since the last miscarriage was the third time she had a miscarriage, it had caused a huge impact on her health. She could feel that her skin was getting dry and her wrinkles were starting to appear, and she even started to show symptoms of gynecopathy. Miley took out a small mirror and checked the dark circles beneath her eyes that could not be covered no matter how much makeup she put on. She cursed the fact that as she grew older, Megan seemed to grow younger. It was as if Megan was still an 18-year-old. The trip to New York was set for three days later. The night before Megan left for New York, Megan packed her stuff and told Alice to listen to her father. Mommy, can Daddy and I go with you? Alice asked as she hugged Megan's leg. Mommy is going for a commercial shoot, not for a holiday. I won't be able to take care of you at that time, Megan tried to explain. But Mommy hasn't traveled with Baby for a long time. Even Uncle and Auntie are taking a Big Patrick on a holiday. When will my Mommy and Daddy take me on a holiday? Alice was rather envious of Patrick, who could go on a holiday together with both of his parents. Although she would often go on a day out, it had always been her daddy or Uncle Treeleaf or Uncle James who had accompanied her. They were all big old men. Boring. Please wait for a little longer. After Mommy finishes this commercial shoot, Mommy and Daddy will take you on a holiday when there's free time, okay? Okay then, pinky promise. Alice extended her pinky finger and then hooked their pinky fingers together. At this time, Connor came in from outside. He asked, Everything all packed up, dear? Yep, almost. Then let's tell our child a bedtime story and go to sleep. Yay, okay. Alice clapped her hands excitedly and then scurried up onto the bed and lay down in the middle, waiting for her daddy and mommy to come over and accompany her. Megan lay next to the child and Connor began to tell a bedtime story. One after another, the stories were told and Alice finally fell into a sweet dream. Well, that's all for tonight's stories. Connor closed the story but lowered his head and kissed his daughter on her forehead. Good night, baby. Megan also kissed her daughter and said good night to her and then got up to go take a bath. After her bath, she sprayed a bit of the bewitching fay on herself and returned to the bedroom. Her husband looked up from his book before she even got close to him. The keen-nosed Connor had already caught a whiff of the faint perfume. What's that smell? It smells really good, he said. Megan laid down beside him, smiling as she replied, I was trying out LK's perfume, the bewitching fay. She had never used a perfume before because she had already smelled good with her own natural body fragrance. Connor was particularly obsessed with this natural fragrance of her body. You are already very fragrant. What about now? Megan asked, lifting her head. Now, as a product endorser for the perfume, she had tried the Bewitching Fay. Though she had already applied a bit of it on herself, the effect was still quite good. And not surprisingly, the man was successfully bewitched by her. The man put down his book and directly took her into his arms. He took a whiff of her hair near her temples and said in a soft voice, accusing her, You bewitching little face, now you're deliberately seducing me. His hot breath sprayed across her ear, sending tingling currents down her body and throughout her limbs. Sensing a dangerous power coming from the man, Megan surrendered. I didn't mean that, my dear husband. Please spare me. Instead of letting her go, he hugged her even tighter. You'll be gone for a week after leaving tomorrow. You have to satiate me first. Can't he bear it without her for a week? It seemed that LK's perfumes wasn't just generally effective. Megan knew that she was not going to escape from the man's web tonight. She begged, No, no, not here. We might wake up our daughter. It's bad if she hears us. Okay, let's go to the balcony. Connor picked the woman up and went to the balcony. He wanted to do it in every corner of the house one by one. The balcony had a lounging couch and very good privacy. It was just like a small room. Megan was placed on the lounging couch. The light was dim and she couldn't tell how the man had produced a rope, directly tying her wrist with it to the armrest of the couch. 
Episode 318, Let Me Go. The handles had been installed for Connor to use when he was still in a wheelchair, and now it had become a tool for his pleasure. Connor played with Megan the whole night until they collapsed from fatigue. Alice woke up the next morning and noticed her parents were not sleeping beside her. She jumped off the bed and searched for her parents outside her room and cried when she couldn't find them. She was afraid that her mother had left and her father was missing, that they had abandoned her. Mommy? Daddy? Alice cried. Her cries woke both of the adults up. Megan realized that she was still in Connor's arms while her hands and legs were still tied to the couch. The man was still half awake while his hand was still in a place where it shouldn't be. Hubby, wake up. I think Alice is crying. Connor was so tired after the fun that he had overslept. He could hear Alice's cries as soon as he woke up. I'll go take a look. Connor quickly put on a robe, but Megan stopped him. Hey, let me go first. Connor looked at the girl that was still tied to the couch and it was appealing. If not for Alice, he would have continued where they stopped the night before. He quickly undid the rope as he scanned the marks that he had left the night before and smiled. I'll go take care of our little princess first. Connor walked past the bedroom and into the living room where he saw Alice was sitting on the ground crying. Cherry, daddy is here. Alice suddenly heard her father's voice and turned around. She quickly crawled towards him as soon as she realized that it really was her father. Daddy, where have you been? I was so afraid. Don't worry, I was in the house the whole time playing cat and mouse, Connor said as he hugged Alice and wiped the tears off her face. I'll hide where you can find me next time, okay? Okay, Alice replied as she stopped crying. Where is mummy? Did she leave already? No, mummy's in the bedroom. Let's get you cleaned up and we'll go find her, okay? Okay. Connor took his daughter to the washroom and cleaned her up. They went to the bedroom after that and Alice saw that her mother was still in there. I thought daddy and mommy had abandoned me, Alice said. There's no way we'd do that, Megan said as she kissed Alice on her cheek. You're our precious baby and we wouldn't be able to live if we lost you. Alice finally had a big smile on her face as she was surrounded by happiness. A van arranged by Euphoria was waiting outside Brooklyn Heights when Megan finished her breakfast. Since Samantha was the president of Euphoria Entertainment, the workload prevented her from accompanying Megan to New York, so she arranged a new manager for Megan. Her name was Caroline. Caroline was Samantha's friend from California, a person that could be trusted. Samantha also arranged Lily to follow Megan to New York as her assistant. Other than the two girls, there were also four other well-trained guards to protect Megan at all times. Since Megan had risen to fame in New York, a few of her fans went to the airport to see her off when they heard that she was going for a commercial shoot. When they arrived at the airport, there were indeed many fans holding up plaques such as Megan and I Heart Megan as they waited for her. When the fans saw Megan getting out of the celebrity van, they swarmed over to her. Megan, Megan, I like you very much. Megan, please give me your autograph. Megan, can we have a photo together? In the face of enthusiastic fans, Megan experienced the feeling of being adored for the first time. She did not refuse the fans' request and patiently signed, shook hands, and took photos with them. Here, Megan was surrounded by fans. Nearby, Miley, who was on the same flight, also arrived at the airport. She also brought a personal assistant, but she didn't see her fans at the airport. She took off her sunglasses and glanced at the lively scene around Megan. She lowered her head and asked her assistant, Stefan, You didn't tell my fans that my flight was today? I did. Stefan was also perplexed. This can't be. He had clearly informed them about the time, but why had not one of Miley's fans appeared? In fact, after Miley had lost Beck, she had found a new assistant, Stefan, who had a slight tendency of not doing things right. It was true that he had informed the fans, but he had carelessly informed them of tomorrow's date and caused Miley to see none of her fans at the airport. Miley fumed with anger as she stood at the entrance of the airport. 
Now it was too late to say anything. She could only helplessly watch Megan being smothered by her fans while she had a cold reception herself. Let's go. She shot an angry look at Stefan and then stomped off into the airport. Megan was almost done with signing autographs and taking photos with her fans. As a qualified manager, Caroline knew how to help her artist escape from being entangled with fans. I'm sorry everyone, Megan has to catch a flight and she's a bit short on time. She will sign more autographs for you all after returning from abroad, okay? With the help of bodyguards and her manager, Megan successfully escaped from her fans and walked into the airport. In addition to Megan and Miley's staff, the LK perfume representative was also in their entourage. The representative had booked business class seats for Megan and Miley, and economy class seats for everyone else. After boarding the plane, Caroline took Lily and the others to the economy class. Megan found her seat and sat down, put on her headphones, and closed and rested her eyes. Megan's seat was a window seat. Soon after she sat down, Miley came over too. She realized that her seat was right next to Megan's and she suddenly felt disgusted, as though a fly had become stuck in her throat. She didn't want to sit with Megan. She turned and asked Stefan, Why did you make me sit together with her? Stefan scratched his head. The tickets were brought by LK. Maybe both seats were bought at the same time. Go help me change my seat. I don't want to sit with her, Miley requested. Stefan felt that they had already boarded the plane, and it was already too late to change seats, but he thought of a good idea. Miley, since you don't want to sit here, why don't we exchange seats? Miley had to scold Stefan. And let me sit in economy class? Do you think I deserve to sit in economy class with the status I have now? Are you Stefan? Stefan nodded, I am. She was so angry that she was speechless. Why did the company find such a slow-witted assistant for her? In the end, Miley sent Stefan away to economy class and stayed in business class herself reluctantly. One must know that she would travel in first class wherever she went. Miley blamed LK for seating her in business class and not in first class. In truth, it was not that LK didn't want to seat them in first class, but it was because first class was fully booked by a certain someone. As Megan was resting, she could feel someone kicking her legs. She opened her eyes and it was Miley who had her bitch face on. What? Megan asked as she frowned. Get up, I want the window seat, Miley requested. Megan realized that Miley was starting to become more like a robber. Who does she think she is? Megan scolded in her head. Does she think that I'm gentle like Hello Kitty because I didn't bite back at her? Why should I even do that? This seat is mine. There's no reason to give it to you. I have motion sickness. Don't blame me if I puke all over you. Not only had Miley made up an absurd excuse, she even acted like she wanted to puke. It was a disgusting sight. In spite of Miley's provocations, Megan still remembered her status and did not argue with her since there were many civilians on the plane. Getting into a fight with Miley would only attract unwanted attraction. Megan decided to give the seat to Miley. Fine. Since you're the senior in the acting industry, it's best for me to respect the elder one. Here, you can have my seat, Miley, Megan said as she stood up. Shut your damn garbage mouth, Miley scolded as she got angry for being called old. Why don't you show us the garbage in your mouth then, Megan said as she grabbed Miley by her wrist and twisted it. Ouch! Miley screamed. It hurts. Let me go. Megan threw Miley's arm to one side and warned in a low voice, You better keep your mouth shut or you'll definitely regret it. Megan sat back down in her own seat as Miley finally stopped causing a scene. The plane was about to take off after all the passengers had arrived. An old woman suddenly came out from first class and stopped beside Miley while she covered her nose. Young lady, can I change my seat with you? The old woman asked. Megan and Miley both turned to look at the old woman. 
She was a huge lady with heavy makeup on her face. Her hair was white and she wore a red shirt with a green dress. A necklace made of pearl was hung around her neck and each of her fingers had a diamond ring on it. The amount of jewelry the old woman had on her almost blinded Megan and Miley. Yet from how the old woman dressed, both of them were biased on her aesthetic standard. Why should I change my seat with you? Miley asked out of curiosity. There's someone with huge body odor in the first class and I have asthma. The old woman explained as she fanned herself with her hand. I will faint if I keep staying there. Are you willing to change your seat with me? Episode 319, Occupied by Him I'm really sorry. I tend to have air sickness so I can't change my seat. Miley had understood why the old lady had come to change her seat. Although she wanted her business class seat in exchange for her first class seat, she still didn't want to go there to smell someone's bad body odor. After the old lady was refused by Miley, she asked Megan, What about you, young lady? Be a good lass and change your seat with an old lady. After Megan understood what was going on, she sympathized with the elderly lady who had asthma. She said nothing more and immediately stood up and agreed. Okay, I will change with you. Oh, thank you so much, young lady. Megan gave up her seat. After the old lady sat down, Megan made her way towards first class to look for the old lady seat number. Miley crossed her arms, smirking as she watched Megan head off into the first class cabin. Huh, she can go there and marinate herself with the stink. Megan walked into first class. The first thing she saw was the bodyguards with black sunglasses sitting in the last row. She guessed that there must be someone very important in first class. Here, the cabin did not smell like bad body odor as expected. A light and refreshing smell wafted over her. It smelled particularly good. Megan moved on and continued looking for her seat in first class. She discovered that, except for the men occupying the last row, most of the seats were empty. Only two other passengers were in this part of the aircraft. To be exact, the two passengers were an adult and child. They were wearing black casual wear from top to bottom. Their faces were unclear as they were also wearing caps, sunglasses, and flu mask. Excuse me, are the seats here free seating? Megan found that the old lady's seat was being occupied by the man. She looked around and saw so many empty seats. She planned that if nobody were sitting in them, she would just simply take any seat. At this moment, the child and the man took off their hats and sunglasses and flu mask at the same time, and then they turned to look at her. An extremely cute little face and a handsome face she had missed so much appeared before her eyes. Megan jumped in surprise. Oh, why are you guys here? Alice swung her legs excitedly on her seat. Hi, Mommy. Are you surprised? Surprised? She was almost shocked, okay? Megan remembered that Alice still had to go to school. How was she going to school now that she was on the plane? Surprised my foot. Tell me, what did you bring her here for? Is she not going to school? Megan asked Connor. Connor explained with a poker face. Soon after you left, the child kept saying that she missed you so much that she was having a stomach ache. I was afraid that things would become more serious the more she missed you, so... Megan knew Connor very well, and all of this must be the result of him spoiling the child too much. If the child said that she wanted to come, he would definitely give in to her. Why didn't you say that it was you who missed me too much and could not bear to be separated from me for a minute? Funny that you used the child as an excuse. Yes, 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 that's right. That's exactly it. Connor nodded furiously. After reprimanding the big one, Megan began to reprimand the little one. And you, you little rascal... Don't you know how to persuade your father? You actually banded up with your father and came to stir up trouble. Both father and daughter exchanged looks and then stuck out their tongues. They had only wanted to give her a surprise, but alas, the two of them got criticized in the end. Both father and daughter could only look to each other for comfort. 
A criticism is a criticism. After that, Megan sat down beside Connor and asked, And don't tell me, you've bought the whole first class? Connor curved his lips innocently. I only wanted a quiet time with my daughter. What about the old lady who was dressed like a Christmas tree? Was that your doing too? Megan recalled that the old woman was cringing and suddenly realized it was a well-prepared play made by Connor. That's right, I asked James to move there. Connor admitted, unable to hide anything from his smart wife. It's so weird for two guys to sit together. Megan was in shock as soon as she heard that the huge old lady in flashy jewelry was actually James in disguise. That was why the old woman was abnormally large and muscular. It was very awkward for James to dress as a woman. Connor was really capable of doing anything for his wife. Connor did promise her that he would always be at her side wherever she went. Now that she had a job in New York, Connor bought the whole first class for his wife and his daughter so that Megan could get a good rest. If possible, he'd actually wanted to book the whole plane. Yet the three of them were able to meet and soon the plane was flying high up in the sky. Connor took out the pillow and blanket he prepared and handed them to his wife and daughter. Rest for a while if you feel tired, Connor said. Megan was a bit drained after the activities she had with Connor the night before. She lowered her seat and fell into deep sleep not long after. Aren't you going to sleep? Connor asked Alice, realizing that she was more energetic than usual. I'm not tired. I can protect Daddy and Mommy when you're sleeping. Thank you. Connor closed his eyes while holding Megan and Alice's hands. He planned to rest for a while, but eventually fell into a deep sleep too. Alice was very happy because she got to go to New York with her parents. It was her first time going to a faraway place after she finally found her father. She was so happy that she wanted to brag about it to Patrick after she got back to New York. Miley could have never guessed that not only was Megan not bothered by any smell in the first class, but she was also even sleeping soundly with her family. In contrast, she was not having such luck. Even though the old woman beside her did mention that she had asthma, she did not show any symptoms of asthma, but instead, she got sick after the plane had taken off, and the old woman even puked all over Miley. Young lady, I'm so sorry. The old woman apologized and continued to puke. My new dress, Miley scolded in her head. And because of where she was, she couldn't make a scene and held her anger back. She went to the bathroom and cleaned herself up. Yet while she was doing so, the plane encountered some turbulence and Miley slipped, plunging her head into the toilet seat. To cover the awful smell on her body, she took out the sweet angel and sprayed the perfume on her body top to bottom. She didn't go back to her seat, but headed to the economy seats where her assistant, Stefan, was sitting. Stefan was kicked back into business class. Not long after Miley sat down, some people began to recognize her. Three women were pointing at her, whispering to each other, Hey, isn't that Miley? It's really her. How did she end up sitting in economy class? Her status must have fallen sharply after being dumped by Peter. She can't even afford to buy first class tickets anymore. Isn't it ironic? After dumping her, Peter became a cripple too in the end. He was also imprisoned for life for murder. Back then, the two were together. I didn't think they were even a good match to each other anyway. Yeah, it must be because she wanted to take advantage of the Wilson family, so she dumped George in the first place. I heard that she got pregnant later, but the child was lost. Who knows if she really had miscarried or if it was deliberately aborted. Maybe she didn't even know who the father of the child was. Miley's face turned green listening to the gossip behind her, and she couldn't take it anymore. She stood up and pointed at those gossiping women angrily. Have I upset you all? Listen, busybodies, if you dare gossip again, I'll rip off your mouths. The gossiping women became very angry after suddenly being scolded by Miley. The three of them stood together to retaliate against her. So what if we settle that? We have freedom of speech and you can't do anything about it. Right. You think you're so great because you're a star. You're a phoenix who has molted its feathers and you're no better than a chicken now. I say you might as well scurry home and make babies. Your temperament is really bad and you're totally different on TV. How did we like this kind of star before? She's really garbage. 
For a time, the economy class was filled with their angry clamor. More people flocked over to watch the drama. Some of the passengers took the opportunity to secretly photograph Miley quarreling with the women. It was truly a rare sight to see a former big shot, A-list artist such as Miley losing her composure and quarreling with the passengers on the plane. Miley was really mad. This was her first time losing her temper in public. In the past, she had always left the impression of being very affable on screen and in front of the camera, but now she was just like a shrew, her hands clawing at those women. If the flight attendants had not come to locate them in time, Miley would have probably lost control and ripped these women apart. She had really had enough and she was very angry. She was frustrated that she had no place to vent her anger. However, if Winley was still around, it would have been different. At least everything would have been arranged properly and there would never have been a series of unfortunate circumstances happening like today. In fact, she didn't realize that she was now worth less than before. Losing an assistant like Winley was just like losing a military advisor. There were many things she couldn't handle herself. The newly recruited assistant, Stefan, was completely hopeless. He was really a good-for-nothing rice bucket. After this incident, Miley finally understood that it was a great loss for her to lose Winley. After more than 10 hours of flight, the plane finally landed at New York Airport. Megan and Connor packed up their things and prepared to get off the plane. The little girl who had been awake during the flight fell asleep when it was time to get off the plane. I'm going to leave with them now. Will you and Alice be all right? Megan had to go with the LK representatives after landing at New York. Connor had arranged everything here and would be fully responsible for their child. Just worry about your commercial shoot. We can take care of ourselves. Okay, let's get in touch again after settling down at the hotel. The couple kissed for a little while. After separating, Megan picked up her bag and left the cabin and rejoined Caroline and Lily and the others. Episode 320, The Best Combination LK's headquarters were located in New York and they'd already arranged cars to pick them up. Miley and Stefan were able to reach the designated pickup point at the last minute. Anger still hung on Miley's face as she sat in the car. She was so pissed at Stefan for not being able to find her luggage and she had to do everything herself in the end. Miley decided that once she was back in New York, the first thing that she would do is fire him. Even though Miley and Megan were both ambassadors for LK, the way they were treated was different. Megan had slept soundly in first class and left the plane brimming with energy. On the other hand, Miley went from business class to economy. Not only had an old lady puked all over her, she had even fought with some of the passengers. She did not even get a minute of rest on her way to New York. There was no way that she could look great. This was probably the worst flight experience Miley had ever had. They arrived at the hotel prepared by LK. Megan stayed in a room by herself while Caroline and Lily slept in the next room. Miley stayed in the room diagonally across from Megan's. The first thing she did after she entered the room was to call Beck. After not contacting her for a long time, Miley decided to bow her head and beg Beck to come back. The call finally went through, and Miley started to ask how Beck was doing. Miley just spit it out. What do you want from me? Beck asked. Beck, I need you. Can you please come back and help me? I regret what I've done. I know I was wrong for yelling at you. Can you please come back? Beck stayed quiet for a few seconds and finally said, I never blamed you. Beck and Miley could only do what they did best when they were together. Miley had screamed at Beck when she had her miscarriage and Beck was hurt by it. But for a long time after that, she did not look for another job because she bet that Miley would come back for her. And she was right. Thank you so much. Where are you now? When can we meet? Miley asked. I'm on vacation in New York. As soon as Miley heard that Beck was also in New York, she shouted in excitement. I'm in New York too. Where are you at? Let's meet now. 
people from LK came to fetch Megan and Miley the next day. Megan was surprised when she saw that Beck was in the hotel lobby standing next to Miley. Where the hell did Beck pop out from? Megan asked in her head. Beck also stared at Megan with surprise in her eyes. In contrast to Miley's heavy makeup, Megan was a perfect natural beauty with no need for glamorous makeup. In just a few months, Megan had become completely different than the newcomer she had been before. Even though Beck was not at Miley's side for some time, she still knew about everything that had happened in the entertainment business. With how Megan landed the ambassador spot for Rozu and LK, it proved that she had the talent for it. Now, for this double endorsement, they might end up becoming inferior to the other if they were not careful. Looks like they wanted to defeat Megan and reap their glory. They had to come up with some dirty tricks. On the first day of their trip, they toured the LK headquarters to learn about the culture, background, and the origin of the company, and also to meet with the LK advertising executives. When their work here was about to begin according to schedule, a scandal related to Connor suddenly broke out on the internet back in New York. Illegitimate child of president of the Howe Group Connor exposed photos. All netizens who had read this news were in an uproar. Everyone already knew that Elvis had a daughter, but how come he had an illegitimate child now? And from the picture, the child's eyes and brow actually looked quite similar to Connor's. The news came like a pebble to the water that stirred up a thousand waves. Immediately after getting wind of the news, reporters in New York were eager to find out more about the inside story of Connor's illegitimate child. After some investigation, they followed clues that appeared and found out the identity of the illegitimate child in the scandal, as well as the child's mother. When their identities were uncovered, everyone was shocked once again. It turned out that the mother of the illegitimate child was the super Super famous Euro America Queen of Love songs, Lily. This is earth shattering news. What a scoop! Lily's identity as the mother was already shocking enough, let unknown the news of her being with Connor. Lily didn't know how Mike's and her whereabouts had been exposed. She had been disguising herself well every day, and no one had recognized her as Lily so far. However, she was suddenly caught by a large group of reporters looking for her. She was really taken by surprise. She was accompanying her son to see a doctor alone. It was hard on her, but now she had to bear the pressure from the media. They were asking whether the child was Connor's. She explained to them countless times, but no one believed her. The reporters learned that the little boy named Mike was hospitalized because of leukemia, and his condition was not looking good. However, during the boy's stay at the hospital, only his mother had been accompanying him. Everyone wanted to know whether Connor knew about the illegitimate child himself. Was Lily a third party who had interfered in Connor's family? In a situation like this, the scandal about his illegitimate child not only failed to be clarified, but it ended up being fiercely escalated. These were some of the headlines of news and articles on the internet. Let's gossip. The women who Elvis loved before in those bygone years. Connor abandoned his illegitimate child because the child is seriously ill? The unknown secrets of the movie King Elvis and the Queen of Love songs Lily. The first person to understand the whole situation was Layla. When she saw her brother's scandals trending on the internet search engines, she immediately contacted him. Connor was far away in New York on a holiday with his daughter. He couldn't help but furrow his brow when he heard the scandal about his illegitimate child. The scandal reported that he and Lily had a son named Mike. The child was now four years old, but he was hospitalized because of leukemia. Now, he really wanted to question Lily. What exactly was she up to now? She obviously knew that he was already married with a wife and a daughter, and yet she had to expose Mike's identity to the public. Did she want to attract the media's attention and let the public condemn him? 
As for the child's hospitalization due to leukemia, is this information even reliable? It was also difficult to find out the real reason from one phone call with Layla. Connor decided to directly contact Lily. Lily's apologetic voice came from the other side of the call. I'm sorry, Connor. I don't know how it turned out like this. I really didn't intend to bother you both. After learning about the situation and confirming that the child was indeed ill, Connor concluded that it wasn't Lily who had intentionally exposed the child's identity. If that was the case, then it must be someone who had deliberately taken advantage of the child to stir up trouble for the purpose of ruining his reputation and destroying his family. Connor would never sit still and let this person ruin his family. The first thing he did was to order Layla to handle the whole scandal. He hoped that there wouldn't be a word about the child after he and Megan returned to New York. After Megan and Miley met with the person responsible for the whole advertisement, they went to see the director of the video, Mason. Mason was a famous director with a weird personality. He required all of the actresses that were a part of his projects to be good at what they were supposed to do. If any of them did not meet his standards, he would fire them straight away. While they were waiting to meet him, Beck showed her phone to Miley. After reading about the news on Connor, a bastard son, she knew that it was Trevor behind it. She thought that her chance had finally arrived. She took a peek at Megan, who seemed like she wasn't affected by the scandal, and guessed that Megan had no idea about it. Miley believed that even if Megan's manager, Caroline, knew about it, she would never tell Megan before the job ended. And her guess was right. After Caroline heard about the scandal from Samantha, she did not tell Megan about it. She even kept Megan from using her phone because she wanted Megan to be focused when meeting with Mason. Yet Miley did not plan to let Megan off the hook that easily. Beck, are you sure about the news regarding Connor and his son? Miley asked in a loud voice. Of course, everyone in New York knows about it, Beck replied. The news mentioned that Connor maintained a relationship with another woman while he was still married. They even have a four-year-old child. I can't believe that he's that kind of person. Megan originally planned to look at the magazine on LK, but Connor's name piqued her curiosity. She heard about the bastard son and looked at Caroline, asking for her phone. I'll give it to you after the meeting, Caroline said while shaking her head. Just give it to me, Megan insisted. Megan read the article about Connor's bastard son on the headline. The news mentioned that Connor abandoned his son, Mike, and Lily because Mike has leukemia. Megan could not help but curse the person who wrote such a nonsense article. She praised the author for his imagination. The only reason why Mike looked a little like Connor was because he was Peter's son. Of course, they would have some similarities. Megan believed in Connor. Thus, the scandal had no effect whatsoever on her. The only thing she was worried about was Mike's illness. She recalled that Lily told her that Mike only had a fever, and Megan pondered when he was diagnosed with leukemia. While Megan was still lost in her thoughts, Miley continued to insult. Looks like someone thought that she found her true love. Who knows? Maybe Connor will admit that the child is his because of the scandal, and he will end up marrying Lily.